please. I surrender. White flag and all. You're telling me this man, on his knees, begging for forgiveness. You killed him. Hey guys, and welcome back to Ray's Gaming Videos. My name is Solo, and today I'm talking about Patches. Best boy Patches, and has never betrayed me in any of the other games either. As it turns out, a lot of people actually accidentally, or maybe intentionally, kill Patches when they first encounter him in that boss encounter in the cave. Cotton, absolute degenerate, also someone who killed a man begging for mercy. These deranged individuals missed out on a full storyline. These deranged individuals missed out on a cool fire whip, and these individuals missed out on a heavy poise based armor set arguably the best in the game not to mention that his full storyline was unfinished at the original release and was then updated in the most recent update and now it's still unfinished so today i'm gonna go through the patches storyline with you show you the rewards and how to get them the order of which you're supposed to do this quest line to not mess it up because it's shockingly easy to do so and miss out on that all important armor set and of course the whip and we're gonna take a look at the new stuff in the new patch to do with patches it's quite a sentence to say and talk about what it means for patches in the future of Elden Ring. Let's start from the top then. We are here at Murkwater Cave, which is found in pretty much center Limgrave, very near Aghiel Lake, and we can enter and go find patches. This cave has an interesting mechanic where you have these alarms where you walk through them and trigger them and all the enemies will attack you. Uh, so you can avoid those by, you know, avoiding the bushes and being very careful not to run into them. But they will make a loud ding sound which draws aggro from basically all the mobs in here. So be careful about that. Yeah, you don't actually want to progress through the cave straight on. You turn right in the main room and then you can find a sort of secret passage which will lead you to the patches room. Inside here you will find a chest that uh, is a bit suspicious. You open it and yeah, Patches is going to yell at you. He's going to be a little bit mad with you for trying to rob him. Understandable. In this scenario, you're actually the one in the wrong if you think about it. And yeah, Patches is an actual sort of boss fight. He has a boss health bar. It's a really cool reveal. Of course, if you know Patches and play the other games, you know that this isn't normal and this isn't likely going to be an actual boss fight. If you're Cotton or other new players to Elden Ring, you might kill him. Don't do that. He literally begs you for mercy. You hit him a couple times and he begs you to stop. If you just stop, he will be chill and sit down and, you know, be friendly with you. And you can either accept his apology or not, but ultimately he will become a merchant and a really important merchant at that. To get him to be his merchant self, though, you need to go back to the any grace, really, and, and reset the area and then go back into the cave where you fought patches. And he's just going to be sat here, now a merchant. He sells some super good stuff, like the parrying dagger, for example, is super good. Uh, some gold feet for your extra runes and in fact the crafting recipe for the gold pickled foul foot which are the items that if you use them you get a temporary buff to your rune discovery getting more runes while you're killing during that which is really important to be able to craft these infinitely and now there's also another chest in here suspiciously and if you talk to him about that and he'll tell you oh it's you know it's a reward that he's looking to give a customer who's really reliable and he really likes who's done a lot for him so it incentivizes you to spend a lot of money on him. Only problem is, if you do actually use that, it's not actually... <laughs> got anything in it. It just teleports you to East Limgrave, surrounded by bears, uh, which could be bad if you do this early in the game. But again, like, I still think you're in the wrong here, right? You tried to take the thing that he's saving for a loyal customer. That's kind of on you. Now, ultimately, he's going to leave this area, and a lot of people, when I made my rune boost video, were confused, like, he's not there anymore. How do I get him? He seems a really important merchant, which he is. He actually moves to the lakes once you have either progressed through Stormvale Castle or gone to the lakes through the side passage, avoiding Stormvale. And he will actually set up his new spot in the lakes for you here on the Scenic Isle, which is pretty much the southeastern point of the lakes as you first enter. And this is also, as you can see in the distance, very much near to another important NPC, the Scout NPC for the Volcano Manor. These two characters are actually tied together in the story. They're actually very linked. Patches will tell you if you speak to him, maybe you should go speak to that lady. She's not sure about her, but you know, maybe you'll get along. And if you also continue talking to him, he'll actually give you some really good advice. He will try to help you on 
on your way to get to the Erd Tree as you want to become the Elden Lord, right? And it'll tell you about a secret way you can get there. Down under the Raya Lucaria Academy is actually a dungeon, and there is a single working Iron Virgin, which if it captures you with its grapple attack, grab attack, it will actually transport you, kidnapping you, all the way to the capital city, to the Erd Tree. Well, that would be convenient, wouldn't it? What a nice guy Patches is to tell us about that really quick shortcut to get to the end of the game. But as you might expect from Patches at this point, uh, not as all as it seems. If you do go to that dungeon down below at the bottom of that huge water wheel lift, uh, you will find the Iron Virgin. It is there and it does transport you when it kidnaps you. It just doesn't take you to the Earth Tree. It takes you to the dungeons of the Volcano Manor, which is actually a really good teleport and very useful and does actually get you to the Altus Plateau region, gives you a path to that region. So inadvertently, he does help you. Either way, when you make it to Mount Gelmir here, he will actually progress to his next location. And a lot of people seem to have missed this because it's, you know, an iconic patches scene that I wouldn't want to miss. Now, I'm here at the Bridge of Iniquity. Uh, this is from progressing through the Altus Plateau region and making my way across the main bridge. If you aren't aware, you can actually get up to the main area of Mount Gelmir from this road. I was completely unaware that there's a much easier way to get up there, so I wanted to share that with you guys in this video. So, running down this road, uh, on your left, you're going to very quickly see near these, hey look, some iron virgins, uh, is a giant ladder that goes very high up. Now we're up here, we're actually very close to Patch's other location. He's right here between these sort of squiggly lines, and he's hiding in a bush. As you can see, across the way from where he's hiding in this bush, are some glowing lights. These are actually the rainbow stones which have been in the game since uh, at least Dark Souls 1, and that's actually where he used them to trick you and kick you off a ledge. If you speak to him, he'll be like, oh, hey, how's it going? Don't worry about me. I'm not doing nothing suspicious at all. But what's that over there? You see them glowing lights on the edge of the cliff? It must be some good loot, right? You go, go check it out. And gullible you as you go over to those shiny lights, you'll see some loot down there. But, I mean, yeah, you're sat on the edge of a ledge and patches behind you? What did you think was going to happen? The man with the strongest kick is going to kick you off the side and, I mean, it's kind of on you. But he does give you good advice. If you're that gullible, you should probably avoid Volcano Manor. It's probably not the place for you. This is another hint that patches is actually tied to the Volcano Manor. Interestingly, what I just described is not necessary to progress his storyline, but it's a really cool thing and, I mean, come on, patches kicking you off the side of a cliff? Who would want to miss that? Either way, his next location is inside of the Volcano Manor. And as it turns out, he's actually part of this faction. He belongs to this group. He's against the Erd Tree and believes that the Two Fingers are, well, as he puts it, putting up a sort of charade, and he wants to expose it. He might not agree with Rykard exactly, but he actually quite likes the lady of the house. As he tells you, you know, she's something else. She's quite a special lady, apparently. Tanith has always made me curious. I've never seen a woman quite like her. Now, interestingly, Patches will not actually show up here in the Volcano Manor or in this hallway until you actually speak with the Lady Tanith and you agree to join the Volcano Manor as one of its subjects. Once you do that, Patches will actually show up in that hallway and you can be begin speaking with him. Now, as you may know, uh, to serve this house, you must go hunt down people who are serving the Erd Tree. You know, we're, we're against that establishment, we're against the Order, so we must take down people who are part of it. But to progress Patch's storyline, you actually only need to do the first one. We go to the drawing room, as suggested by Tanith, and uh, yeah, we pick up the letter that gives us our first assassination mission. When you have one of these in your inventory, it'll show you with a red marker on the map where you need to go to do the invasion, which is at the north point of Limgrave, so very easy to get to. When we go here and invade this knight, we will defeat him, and you get the scale armor, which is uh, actually one of my favorite sets in the game. Now, upon returning to Volcano Manor and basically handing in that quest to Tanith, she will commend you and you'll find that after you do each of these assassinations, she will give you a reward. This one being a magma sort of incantation. Now, at this stage, you go to speak to Patches and he's like, hey, you're part of the manor and you're doing missions. Cool. Well, you know, now we're friends. I think what I'm going to do is give you a favor and I'm going to give you a special mission. He wants you to go kill Tragoth, who is actually a famous knight. In his lore, it says that that countless tarnished facing adversity in the lands between have survived thanks only to the Great Horned One's aid. Because of this 
Great Knight, many tarnished, have survived a situation where they would have died. And your job is to go kill this guy. <laughs> the only problem is this mission takes place in a pretty awkward place to go, if you've not been there intentionally, in the Magma Worm boss fight area. To do that, the closest grace I recommend is Bellum Church. And as you make your way down the river and follow it along, you'll eventually reach the grace, the Ravine Veiled Village. And you'll make your way up and up and up this precipice, eventually getting to another grace and continue climbing up until you eventually reach the ruin strewn precipice overlook which is where i'm standing now from here it's very easy to just enter the boss fight it's literally just around the corner and you will have to defeat the magma worm boss fight which actually has a really good faith weapon if you're interested in that this boss area will be where you do your invasion refresh the area by resting at the grace and the invasion sign will appear on the ground quite near the grace after you go in there and kill tragoth awesome, you're actually going to get his armor set, which is, as I was saying, one of the best physical protection armor sets in the game, and it's going to provide you the most poise out of any armor set I have seen. If you do not do the patches storyline, you will miss this armor set. Now, if you return to the manor with your mission done, uh, now talk to patches, he will be like, wow, you did it. Amazing. Awesome. Well, you just rest. Uh, I'll, I'll go tell Tanith that you did this. Uh, and, you know, you just relax. Well done. And he goes and tells Tanith that obviously he killed Tragoth and he gets the reward uh, and then hopes that you won't even like realize because he thinks you're so gullible. If you do acknowledge this, he will say, fine, fine. I was just holding on to it for you. And it will be the Magma Whip Candlestick coming with the Sea of Magma Ash of War, which is quite interesting, generating magma around you, which can be good in certain situations, although it's got small range. And it's, a, it's actually a deck scaling whip with faith if you're into that. Now, to progress this storyline with Patches, you actually need to get him to leave the Volcano Manor. The thing is, he's bound here. He is quite literally tethered to this, this manor. He really cares about Tanith, and he wants to be part of this mission. So, if we go kill the boss of Volcano Manor, called Rykard, he will have no reason to stay here. The thing is, Rykard can't die, and Tanith wants to rebirth him by eating him, and I guess giving birth to him again or something. You can return to the boss room at any time and see this happening and speak to her. And she'll say, I'm sorry, I, I, there's a lot of him to eat. I'm busy. Either way, you speak to Patches after defeating Rikard. And he will say, wow, well, you went and did it. You, you actually killed Rikard. You killed one of the, the main shard bearers of this world. Maybe actually against even what he thought a tarnished could become Elden Lord. And it honestly seems to me like he's kind of coming around like his skeptical view being against the earth tree, maybe he's wrong. And now he acknowledges he is untethered. He's going to explore again. He's going to wander the world. And he chooses to progress the Altus Plateau area. We find him now after the update in the Shaded Castle, which is the sort of middle or north area of the Altus Plateau. And of course has the Briar boss fight at the end of it. You have the boss room, but first on your left is Bold Boy Patches. And he's looking a little bit worse for wear, actually, isn't he? Now, you want to be very careful because if you do any damage to him, he will die. He's very weak right now. If you speak to him, he kind of explains that, well, he got in over his head, which is completely out of his character, isn't it? He decided to progress the Altus Plateau and kind of go towards the Erd Tree and found himself here at the Shaded Castle and tried to take on the leader or, or main boss of this area. He's hurt, but he's not dead. And he tells you, please give this to Tanith. These dancers' castanets seem to be important to her character. He wants her, as he says it, to be back on her high horse. He wants her to be, you know, full of herself, confident, regal. I guess he respects her and maybe, maybe likes her. If you speak to him again, he'll say, oh, so you're going to do this for me? then I can rest easy. And he calls you his friend. And this is the first time that I think maybe it's actually genuine. Either way, his head droops and he no longer speaks to you. You can't interact with him. And if you reload the area, go anywhere, do anything at this point, he will be gone from this point. There won't be a corpse. There won't be loot on the ground. He just won't be there anymore. So it's kind of unknown whether he died or he left, we are completely unaware of his whereabouts. No one has found him. Upon inspection of those castanets then, uh, apparently these are used by dancers from foreign lands. And of course, we were given it by patches. The passionate dance comprises no seductiveness, but a dignified beauty. Perhaps that's how patches perceives Tanith. Now here's the best part. <laughs> if you go back to Tanith, where she's, you know, consuming Rikid in the boss room and give her these castanets, she instantly states that she has no need of that. And she's kind of irritated 
by the suggestion or offering, in fact. It means absolutely nothing to her and she cares much more about eating Rikard and rebirthing him somehow. You speak to her again and she gives you the normal dialogue as if you never gave her those castanets. And we see no progression of her character or Rikard. And that's where the story ends as of the current update. Now, if you do kill Patches before he disappears from the world, you will get his bell bearing, which is obviously going to have everything that he would normally sell. Uh, you get his spear, which is a plus seven. And then you get his leather armor set, which is quite a unique look, isn't it? This is what you get if you kill him, but I don't think it's worth it. Don't kill Patches. What do you guys think? Do you think Patches is going to get more storyline? I reckon, if nothing else, he's going to be back in some kind of DLC situation. We saw that with Dark Souls 3. This, he literally got more story in the DLC. So I fully expect to see him in Elden Ring's DLC, which I surely hope happens. And I actually have some suspicions and thoughts on what I think that could be. I reckon Rikard's going to be involved. I reckon Tannis going to be involved. I hope Patches shows up, obviously tied to that. But for now... Either we get more updates on Patch's storyline in another patch or another update, or we wait for it in DLC. So I strongly recommend you do his storyline. It's well worth it just for the armor set, the weapon's solid, and it's quite a cool storyline to do yourself. For now though, that is the Patch's storyline as where it ends. If this video was useful or at least interesting to you, please drop a like so I can keep making videos like this. Would you guys like to see more full NPC storylines and guides like this? Let us know. Either way, I've been Hollow, you've been you. Thanks for watching. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye